Welcome to lecture four on this exciting series on fluids and electrolytes. These uh, lectures are accompanying my book, Manual of Fluid, Electrolyte and Acid-Based Disorders, A Pathophysiologic Approach to Common Clinical Problems. I'm Dr. Mohamed Tinawi, and this is my book. You can find more information about it um, in the uh, description. We are still on Chapter 1, Disorders of Water Balance, Hyponatremia and Hypernatremia. Welcome to Part 4. Today we are going to talk about the diagnosis of hyponatremia and then we are going to talk about osmolar clearance and free water clearance. Um, I know that you've been anxiously waiting to hear about that and I can't wait to get started. What about diagnosis of hyponatremia? As with anything else, we need a history, we need a physical exam and some laboratory testing. History. The cause of hyponatremia usually can be deduced from taking a good history. So sometimes it's very obvious. You have GI losses, diarrhea, vomiting. The patient is on a certain medicine like an SSRI, like a sertraline, paroxetine, carpamazepine, a thiazide type diuretic. Okay. Um, sometimes you have a clear pulmonary or neurological disorder, subarachnoid hemorrhage, pneumonia. Sometimes you have a clear history of high intake of water or alcohol. A prior history of hyponatremia is very helpful. A prior lab is very helpful. You can know if this is chronic, acute, recurrent, or not. Sometimes recurring hyponatremia can be a clue to uh, a diagnosis of SIADH. Physical exam. Really, we're doing a concentrated physical exam, so we are focusing on volume status. Is the patient hypovolemic? like you would see in vomiting or diarrhea. Is the patient euvolemic, like you would see with, say, adrenal insufficiency or SIADH? Or do we have hypervolemia, like you would expect in a patient with congestive heart failure or liver cirrhosis? This narrows the differential diagnosis and subsequently narrows the list of tests that we're going to do. So you're going to do a skin exam, a mucous membranes exam. I know it's not very accurate, but it's the best we have. Blood pressure is, is important. Uh, pulse measurement, checking orthostatic uh, uh, blood pressure is very important. Now, laboratory testing, we don't really need to do extensive testing, especially if the diagnosis is obvious. Many times, hyponatremia is chronic, is recurrent. All these labs have been done before, so we don't need to repeat them. Generally speaking, we need electrolytes. How can we diagnose hyponatremia without knowing what serum sodium is, okay? So we need electrolyzed sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarb, uh, blood urea, nitrogen, creatinine, of course. We need a serum osmolality to know that the patient is hypoosmolar or more rarely uh, isosmolar or hyperosmolar. We need to know urine osmolality and we need to know urine sodium and potassium. If we are suspecting SIADH, it's helpful, like we said, to exclude hypothyroidism by checking TSH and free T4. If we're suspecting adrenal insufficiency, there's history of dizziness, there is hypotension, maybe orthostatic hypotension, uh, especially if there's acidosis, some hyperkalemia, uh, then we do the ACTH simulation test, like I talked about in a previous lecture in this series. And now, uh, the moment that you all have been waiting for is osmolar clearance and free water clearance. This is not an easy concept to grasp. I'm really going to do my best to explain it. Those of you who's never heard of it uh, probably should watch this more than one time. Okay, It's particularly important to understand polyuria. It is important to understand the upcoming lecture on electrolyte free water clearance. Uh, for those of you who are going to take a board type exam, especially uh, nephrology, critical care, endocrinology, this may come up. Okay, so now we'll start with simple examples and then we are going to expand on that. Let's first imagine that we have one liter of isotonic saline of 0.9 normal saline. In that liter, we have 154 mole equivalents per liter of sodium and 154 mole equivalents of chloride. Now, if we take half a liter of the same solution, now we have 77 sodium and 77 chloride. Okay, easy enough so far. Now, if we mix that half liter of normal saline with 
another half liter of cell water, we are still going to have 77 sodium and 77 chloride because the cell water doesn't have any electrolytes. And now we have a liter of 0.45 normal saline. Okay. Now uh, look at the picture here of the half normal saline bag. And I drew here a black line in the middle. Just imagine uh, that the solutes, okay, the sodium and the chloride are, say, in the bottom half, and the cell water is in the upper half. Just imagine, have a mental picture that they're separate, although they can't be separate, they're going to mix up, but just imagine that, okay, it's, it's going to help us in a second. Okay, now let's take this a step further. Let's take an individual with, say, plasma osmolality of 300 milliosmol per kilogram of water. Okay, now if we give this person, this individual, one liter of an intravenous solution that has a sodium of 150 and chloride of 150, this solution osmolarity will be 300, so the same as his plasma osmolality. His, so plasma osmolality will not change. Okay, so this solution by definition is iso osmolar to the plasma, has the same, iso means the same, has the same osmolarity uh, as the, the plasma. Okay, now, if we give the same individual uh, one liter of a solution that has half of that osmolarity, not 300, make it 150, one half. So this solution, again, can be thought of as 0.5 liter of the 300 equivalent per liter solution plus 0.5 of free water. Imagine that to mix this solution we got 0.5 liter of free water and we added one half liter of the 300 solution so we end up with 150 equivalent per liter solution. Again imagine that the water is separate from the part of the solution that has the sodium and the chloride. Okay so let's continue to build up. So we can think of urine volume consisting of two components. The first component contains all the osmos in a concentration similar to the plasma. This is isoosmolar, similar to the plasma. The second component is free water. Let's assume that we have someone with a plasma osmolality of 290 milliosmol per kilogram of water. And let's assume that this person is making two liters of urine and that the urine osmolality is 145 milliosmol. We can think of this urine consisting of one liter of free water added to one liter of isoosmolar urine, which uh, the, the osmolality is what? 290. So if we mix them, now we get two liters with an osmolality of 145. Or you can think of it as if we take the two liters, of 145 milliosmol per liter and if we extract, if we remove one liter of free water, then we are left with one liter of 290 milliosmol, which is similar to the plasma. Now, we said let's call urine volume V, let's call the free water portion, free water clearance, CH2O, and this is again volume, and let's call the portion that is isoosmolar to the plasma osmolar clearance, or C-osm. Therefore, urine volume is CH2O plus C-osm. So this big volume consists of two other volumes. So free water clearance and osmolar clearance are both volumes. Brain. Okay. So now, this is the same thing I was just talking about, okay? So urine volume equals osmolar clearance plus free water clearance. Urine volume is going to be V. Osmolar clearance is going to be C osm plus free water clearance is CH2O. Now, what is C osm? C osm simply is urine volume. And then we take urine osmolality, we divide that by plasma osmolality, and we multiply it by volume. And Using that equation, the C-osm equation, we can easily deduce the free water equation because it's urine volume minus C-osm. So you can remember either the first equation, which is easier, C-osm equals V times urine-osm divided by plasma-osm. And if you so choose, 
you can uh, remember the second one, which is free water clearance equals V, parentheses 1 minus U osm divided by P osm, and then you close the parentheses and you calculate it that way. Basically, if you know one, you can know the other because both of them combined uh, form the urine volume. Okay, so if, if urine volume is 4 and C osm is 3, then the CH2O will be 1. Okay, so that's uh, easy, easy uh, math. Okay, so to calculate free water clearance or osmolar clearance, all we need is to know urine volume in liter, urine osmolality, and plasma osmolality. That's it. Now, why do we need this? Well, we need this sometimes in patients with polyuria to know if they have solute diuresis or water diuresis. Let's take this example. 40-year-old man has normal plasma potassium and sodium, has a plasma osmolality of 290 milliosmol per, kilo, uh, per kilogram of water, and his urine output is uh, 2 liters. Okay? His urine osmolality is 145. So this urine, we can think of it consisting of two components. One liter of free water, okay, CH2O is one liter, and one liter that is isoosmolar to the plasma, okay, because his urine osmolality is 145 in two liters, so 145 times 2 is 290, which is equal to the plasma osmolality. Again, to the cylinders, if we imagine urine volume is 2, consisting of two parts. The free water is one liter, and then the other part is one liter, similar in osmolality to the plasma, which is 290. Let's take this example. We have a 40-year-old man with a plasma osmolality of 285 milliosmol per kilogram of water. His urine output is 4. Urine osmolality is 95 milliosmol per kilogram of water. Is this a solute diuresis? Is it due to increase intake of sodium or protein, or is it a water diuresis? First of all, urine output is over 3 liters, so this is polyuria. This is the first step when someone comes in and say, oh, I'm urinating a lot. You measure a 24-hour urine collection. If it's less than 3 liters, it's not considered polyuria. So here we have polyuria. So what is a free water clearance? We use that equation, and you can see the simple calculations on the screen, and we get free water clearance volume of 2.68. So this is water diuresis. Simply, he's drinking a lot of water and urinating. If he drinks more, he's going to urinate more. And you can deduce that just by looking at his low urine osmolality of 95. Now, if uh, you want to calculate the osmolar clearance, you just uh, say uh, Osmolar clearance equals urine volume minus free water clearance, so 4 minus 2.68 is 1.33, or you can use the equation on, on the screen. Again, once you know one, you know the other be, uh, based on urine volume. Now, what if urine osmolality is 400? In this situation, we get free water clearance of negative 1.6. What does that mean? It means that the kidneys are really extra extracting free water from the urine, that the urine is concentrated with solutes. And this is really pretty much a normal situation. Um, uh, if you look at, at the equation, anytime urine osmolality is above plasma osmolality, even by one, you're going to, to have a negative free water clearance, okay? If, if the uh, numerator is more than the denominator, um, you, you are going to, uh, uh, to have a negative free water clearance. And that's normal, doesn't mean anything. It means that ki the kidneys are working and then they, they are concentrating uh, the urine. Um, however, in, in a situation where you have polyuria um, and you have that, then you have to look at other things uh, do we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, intake of protein? Is urine urea high? Is urine sodium high? And in the next lecture, I'm going to start with an example. We'll review this topic very quickly again because it's important. And we'll, we'll give an example and then we'll talk about uh, electrolyte free water clearance. I hope that this was clear. Please view more than once if needed and uh, see you in lecture five.